Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to another Pokemon Red and Blue solo run, and today uh, we're going to be doing Krabby. Krabby was always an interesting Generation 1 Pokemon, and by interesting I mean it's literally just a crab and it's not interesting or thought-provoking uh, by any stretch of the imagination. Its stat total was a little higher than most pre-evolved Pokemon at 325, and at first glance its speed's not awful, it's got a base 50, uh, it's got a really high defense, a uh, stat of 90, and it sports a pretty salivating 105 attack stat. The really worrying part about Krabby, as you may have noticed, is it has abysmal HP and a huge red flag is the 25 in its special stats. Now we'll get into why the offensive side of that will be problematic in the move pool section, but it means that defensively Krabby will be a liability against any heavy neutral damage and will just get downright nuke uh, to the shadow realm against any type of super effective damage. Krabby's level up learn set doesn't inspire greatness. Bubble is sufficient to get by Brock but means that we're going to struggle in every other battle early in the game. Vice Grip's going to be crucial to get, but it's a generally, it's just a bad move. Uh, Guillotine is the ultimate luck based move, and it'll have a few uses here and there. Harden is an amazing badge boost conduit and crab hammer. Well, we'll just, we'll talk about crab hammer way later in the video. It's a pretty nutty move. For TMs, there is this misconception that it can learn Mega Punch on some of the Smogan forums that I use to get some ideas of what people rank these pre-evolved Pokemon. And the main problem with Krabby is that it has an excellent attack stat, but no real way to take advantage of it. We'll pick up Body Slam after the second gym, and that's pretty much it. That's, that's as far as it goes. It does get Sword Stance, but it doesn't really do as much as you would think. And excellent core moves like Surf and Ice Beam aren't as good as you might think because the poor special stat means that the damage will be extremely poor at pretty much all stages of the game. Overall, Krabby is going to be a wild ride with multiple lows and highs. My initial thoughts is that it will be around the C tier, but before we get into the video, I'd like to ask for you to subscribe if you enjoy this content and click that bell if you're interested in this series. I do it weekly and I love to hear any feedback, suggestions, and just generally interact with you guys. And with that said, grab yourself a Sodi Pop and let's dig in. But not literally, because Krabby can't learn to dig in Generation 1, that's not until Generation 3. Right from the start, like with all runs, I save before I take my starter, and I reset until I get decent DVs. I don't reset a whole ton, I don't want a perfect Pokemon, the goal is just to have a decent version of the Pokemon. And quickly you'll notice some problems with Krabby. I cannot beat the first rival battle. Krabby has Pathetic Special, and Bubble is already an incredibly weak 20 power move that's also resisted by Bulbasaur. I don't even bother to reset because I don't think any amount of luck will get you past this one. Looking ahead to Brock, he's obviously not going to be an issue, and I'm not sure that I even need any extra battles, but looking ahead, we need a non-water move to fight Misty, and that doesn't happen until level 20, so skipping the trainers early doesn't make any sense. And here we run into another huge problem with Krabby early on. The combination of his low special, plus only having bubble, means that even the first optional bug catcher is a hassle to get through. I faint multiple times, I have to grind metapods just to get some levels. And after some trial and error, I eventually get through all the available battles despite Bubble doing its best to hold me back. The main issue throughout the process was poison, and I hit several unlucky attempts and tries where poison just chipped away at my already low HP. The only trainer that I left behind was the Rival 1A fight, and I'll play you a quick attempt. I get Sand Attack three times, and my damage output is so low that I just said no thank you, and I moved on with my life. Eventually, I make my way to Pewter City, and then after a very close battle against the Junior Trainer, despite having a major type advantage, it's finally time to get past Brock at level 11. And as you'd expect, even Bubble's 20 base power combined with Krabby's minuscule special is enough to two-shot both of Brock's double weak to water Pokemon. But we all know that Brock was never the issue here, and this is a tier list raised, and my mindset is that the early battles to make it to where you need to be later in the game is the strategy to getting the best times that you can get out of these Pokemon. Now with that said, you know Pokemon's early game is pathetically weak when you struggle pre-Brock and you have to reset multiple times on the comfy shorts youngster here. His Pokemon just do too much damage and the Crab Man, despite its excellent defense, just couldn't seem to get past it. Look at this successful attempt here and see how I barely scrape by with the skin of my teeth. 
Now I wouldn't say all of the trainers here are overly difficult, but you do have to heal via potions or Poke Centers nearly every battle or two, and trainers like this Jigglypuff last can go to hell. Thankfully, Mount Moon wasn't that bad. Water Gun is an immediate double power boost to Bubble. There's extra hikers in here to fight for some easy experience, but I would like to show video evidence that Krabby cannot learn Mega Punch, despite two people on the Smogum forums bumping it up a full tier because of it. And I really wish it could learn it, as much as the next Krabby fanatic, but it just it simply cannot, and I can't change that. Finally, at the end of Mount Moon, I reached level 20 on the Super Nerd, and that gets us Vice Grip. It's a 55 base power normal move, it's nothing special, but it uses the attack stat, and that means that Krabby goes from a weak Pokemon to something that's pretty respectable. And with our high defense and water typing, it's time to just go ahead and face Misty. I do lose the first attempt because of a Starmie critical hit, but the second attempt goes our way despite getting low in the process. And after that, it's time for rival number two, and we do hit some luck here. The Pidgeotto uses Gust instead of the dreaded Sand Attack, and Vice Grip is a two hit knockout. All the other Pokemon go down to one hit, and Ivysaur goes for Growl. Vice Grip really makes a difference in the short time that we've had it, and going forward to Nugget Bridge and the routes to Bill's house, they're not really worth mentioning. I do fight some of the optional hikers here just to get some extra experience since now that I have Bubble Beam and it's just fast to get through. Afterwards, it's time for the SS Anne, and like with most Pokemon, Body Slam is a valuable TM to pick up, and even more so with Krabby's attack stat, we'll end up sticking with it and using it the entire run. And after that, we can immediately see its power on rival number 3. The first attempt, I find out that I'm just out of range to one-hit the Pidgeotto. I get Sand Attacked, and I go on to miss two key Body Slams at the end of the fight, and I get knocked out. The second time, the initial Body Slam triggers a retroactive potion instead, I don't take any sand attacks, thus I don't miss any body slams later in the fight and I just sweep through it. Then we get cut from the captain and at this stage I'll be skipping Lieutenant Surge for obvious reasons. Outside of just being a water top, Krabby's poor special makes it much worse and there's no doubt that Raichi would knock us out probably with even a Thundershock. I'm honestly afraid to even think what a Thunderbolt would do, it would probably fry my computer and force me to face reality. Instead, we'll go ahead and zoom through Rock Tunnel, and there's nothing to mention there, so we are moving on to Lavender Town, and this time I try something a little different. I decide to go ahead and handle rival number 4. I get that I'm wasting about 40 seconds to walk in there and walk up to him, but I know that I'll need the experience, and I think that getting the levels when I'm at this level, as opposed to waiting till after Celadon, when you generally massively outlevel him, is worth to go ahead and just do it now, instead of just following the same routes with zero experimentation. I'm probably overthinking it a bit, but that's what I do. Rival number 4, even if fought immediately, still poses no challenge. I'm not sure if the critical hit on Pidgeotto really would have mattered, but either way we avoid Sand Attack this time as well. Gyarados does take a couple of hits to go down, but since Krabby has good defense, even a bite that crits doesn't do too much. The other Pokemon get taken down with a single hit, and I do get the 1 out of 3 paralyzed chance on Ivysaur, and it doesn't even get the chance to attack. Afterward, it's on to the usual route of Celadon. I give the little girl some water for Ice Beam, and then it's on to the Rocket Hideout. And then the first Giovanni fight with a water type, it's always going to be a joke, despite low special. The first two Pokemon are double weak to Bubble Beam, and Body Slams are easy enough to get past the Kangaskhan. After that, I go pick up Fly, and we can't use it just yet, so I head over to Saffron, and I take the short route to Vermilion, so that we can backtrack and take on Lieutenant Surge. The first time I face him, Body Slam plows through the first Pokemon, and since I'm a high level, it just barely misses knocking out the Raichu, and it goes for a Thunderbolt, and I get obliterated. The second time, it turns out that it was actually a range, and I do take out the Raichu in one hit, and I avoid any further Thunderbolt shenanigans. More importantly, we hit level 35 in the fight, and we get Crab Hammer, and we're going to segue into everyone's favorite minute. Math Minute. Crab Hammer is a 90 base power water move with a subpar 85% accuracy, but it's Krabby's best move. It gets the same type attack bonus, which would make it a 135 base power move, and that's nothing to scoff at, even with the poor special that we've been beating on like a dead horse. Like with Karate Chop or Slash, it is a high critical hit rate move, meaning that it takes a Pokemon's crit chance and puts an 8 times multiplier on it. Krabby has a base crit rate of about 9.77 crit, just shy of 1 out of 10. 
when you use crab hammer the chance it will crit goes up to 78.13% chance which is slightly less than 4 out of 5 times which is pretty reliable. Also if you quickly look at the formula of 2 times the Pokemon level plus 5 over your Pokemon's level plus 5 to calculate critical hits damage multiplier at level 35 you'll see that we get about 1.875 times damage on a critical hit. So what does this all mean? Why are we doing math, Matt? Well, I say all of this to let you know that nearly 80% of the time, Crabhammer, with all of this kept in mind, turns into an over 253 base power move that Krabby has at its disposal, and that's pretty nuts. Now keep in mind, as I've mentioned plenty of times already, that Krabby has a base special of 25, and even though this move looks absurd from a numbers perspective, it's not quite as overpowered as you'd really think. The point is, Crabhammer is an absolute nuke and it will be one of Krabby's most utilized tools going forward. And now, with that said, let's go back to your regularly scheduled Krabby programming. Now that we can use Fly, I finish up Pokemon Tower and I get the Pokey Flute. And now it's time just to go ahead and try Fuchsia City out as our next stop. And without showing every single battle, the jugglers inside Koga's Gym were an absolute nightmare. Psychic types against Krabby's poor special is just the recipe for a frustrating time, and I had to try many times on the plethora of similar trainers found in Koga's gym. Eventually we pick up all the wins and we move on to Koga, and it does take me about 5 times or so to get through this fight. The muck and the two coffins aren't an issue at all, but it's just the self-destruct when I've been chipped down a little bit that kept getting me over and over. Eventually, I'm healthy enough and I make it to the Weezing so that I hang on with 8 HP and I survive the self-destruct and we get our badge. From there, it's time to go ahead and get Sir, and then it's time for the dreaded Silph Co. and I'm not excited about rival number 5 at all. It's also worth mentioning that I learned Harden at level 40, but we'll go into that soon. But I ended up getting past this fight on my first try, which is something I'm not sure I've ever done before in these runs. I don't mess around when it comes to the Pidgeot. I slam it down with three body slams, and it makes some bad AI move decisions, and the second one prompts a retroactive super potion. Gyarados comes in, and I know I'll need some badge boost with Harden, but not too many because I know I'll level up and lose it anyway. I probably could have only done two Hardens, but I do three instead, and it turns out to be a two shot on Gyarados. It does get off a of Dragon Rage, which does a flat 40 HP, and Krabby has bad HP to begin with, so that's not very good. I level up after the fight, and I still have three more Hardens to do. At this point, I'm forced to set them up against Growlithe. And of course it crits with the takedown, it gets me down to 13 HP, and I'm just seeing what happens at this point, and I'm finishing up the Hardens, and I get hit with yet another takedown, and I'm down to 6 HP. It goes for one that would finish the match, and it misses instead. Then comes in the Alakazam, and it's always scary, but 3 Hardens means that I outspeed it, and one body slam is enough to get past it. But at this point, I'm still only 6 HP against the Grass Top Venusaur. One body slam doesn't do it, and this battle is all but over, but Venusaur decides to go for Leech Seed. In Generation 3 or later, this would be a problem and would be dead right now, but in Generation 1, Leech Seed doesn't do its damage until after I take my turn, so it gives me another chance to do a Body Slam, and I take the victory by the smallest margins on my first try. It's worth mentioning that Swords Dance is in the building, and I do pick it up. I decide to stick with Harden, and we'll go into that before the Elite Four, but I think Harden is the better choice. But moving on, it's time for Giovanni number two, and I set up some Hardens on the first Nidorino, and then Crab Hammers mixed with some Body Slams are easily enough to get past this battle, no issues at all. Next up, I go straight to Sabrina. The low special worries me a lot, but Krabby might be the luckiest Pokemon I've played with so far. First, the Kadabra goes for Disable, it fails, a Body Slam knocks it out. Then Mr. Mom comes in, and that's my chance to set up some badge boost. So I go for Hardens. I don't set up the full 6, just enough that I can speed the Alakazam, but Al uh, Mr. Mom just ends up going for barriers and light screens for all of its turns. It does take a couple of moves to knock out, but we move on. Now the problems arise on Venomoth. A turn 1 Body Slam does tons of damage, but it's not enough for a one shot. It responds with a Stun Spore. Now that I'm paralyzed, it hits a side beam for respectable damage, and I inexplicably go for a crab hammer and I miss. I don't know why I did this. This allows Venomoth to get off another side beam, but this time it critically hits and takes me down to 6 HP, and I'm unable to move due to paralysis during the next turn. 
and at this point it's all but done for. But it goes for a leech slap and it only does a puny 3 points of damage and I take it out. But there's no way I'm beating Alakazam at, at 6 HP, right, while I'm paralyzed. Well, you'd be wrong. It comes in, it goes for recover like a genius. I go for a body slam and I connect for a one shot and get another unprobable win in my last three battles. I love Generation 1. I'm still saving Erica at this point, so that's the last place I'll go. So we head down to Cinnabar. I surf down from Pallet Town, and I head to face Blaine. I see no reason at this stage to skip what are pretty much just the easiest trainers in the game for me and just free experience. But I do have to answer my favorite question. Tombstone, brother. Correctly, because in my heart, I know it's a real TM, and I get lied to by the game saying it's not, and then after that we move on to face Blaine. And as you would think, this is Krabby's easiest gym outside of Brock. I have my choice of Crab Hammer or Body Slam. I set up some Hardens on Growlithe. And while I don't necessarily one-shot everything, my high defenses and resistance to fire means that I can outpace the tougher Pokemon. Eventually, I take down the Arcanine, and we pick up our sixth gym. Now we've put off Erica for long enough. It's time for the famous 100% critical hit Razor Leaf Big Tree Bell. How will Krabby do? Well, the answer to that is that I'm level 48, and with my nearly 20 level advantage, Body Slam just one shots both Victory Bell and Tangela quite easily, and the Vile Plume does survive one. And you can just see here how much a Petal Dance does, despite me being this over level, and that's why I had to get this high. Crabby special defense and HP are a wet piece of tissue paper, but alas, we get it done. Afterwards, since I'm in the area, I spend all of my money on calcium and carbos. Outspeeding is obviously important, but I'm hoping that maybe I can band-aid up some of my special as I go for the last seven fights in the game. At least that's the idea. It's time for the eight gym, and since I have a feeling I'll need some levels, I do battle all of the trainers inside of Giovanni's gym. And I thought I'd leave this one battle in here. It's a double back-to-back -back critical hit stomps that both flinch me to take me out from nearly full HP. I'm not sure of the odds of that, but they have to be low, and it got a sensible chuckle out of me. Eventually, I reach level 50 off the trainers, and I go into what I always consider the easiest Giovanni fight. I set up a few Hardens. I take out the Rhydon, e or right Horn, I should say, easy enough. I level up after it goes down, losing my badge boost. This means I take some chip damage and I eventually reset up Hardens on Needle Queen. It gets me down to red HP, but since I outspeed the rest of his Pokemon and they are weak to Crab Hammer, it's not really an issue, so I still get the win. It wasn't really as close as it looks. And you know what time it is, there's only six trainers left. It's almost playoff time, but first it's time for rival number six. The first attempt goes pretty well through the first Pokemon. The real problem here is that I level up during the fight and I lose my badge boost. If Venusaur goes for Razor Leaf, then the fight's just over, no questions asked, and that's exactly what happens on my first attempt. The second attempt goes even worse, I'm chipped down even further, and I get hit with another Razor Leaf. On attempt 3, I try to TM Blizzard to see how that goes, and it works pretty well against the Pidgeot, but when I make it to the Venusaur, it doesn't even do half of its health since Krabby's special is so pathetic, and a Vine Whip just forces another reset. I try a couple more times, but eventually I get, I feel really dirty. I hit a Hail Mary guillotine on the Venusaur, and I'm not proud of myself, but the alternative would be to go back to Seal for something and grind up experience so that I didn't level up after the Alakazam so that my badge boost would be intact, and pretty much just do the fight until I don't get razor relieved. Admittedly, guillotine's 30% chance is low, and up to this point, this is really the only time I've ever really used it, uh, and I'm taking this win, there's nothing you can do about it. And at this point, only the Elite Four are left. I'll play the footage going up to Victory Road and a little bit inside. I will battle trainers in there because I can save some time. I think Krabby is a fine Pokemon so far and my time at this section of the game is fantastic. But I get the feeling that I'm going to get stuck if I just go straight to the Elite Four. My Sandshrew time was just as good, but having to backtrack to battle these trainers did cost me a good 20 minutes, so we just go ahead and take care of it now. My initial thoughts on the Elite Four is that Agatha will be a nightmare, and since I don't have any super effective moves against Lorelei, I might need to do a lot of battles before I get a pretty good strategy going. And let's go to Lorelei, and as usual, we'll be going through member by member instead of the sequential order out of the 50 or so tries it took me to get to the Elite Four. My very first attempt, I actually get past Lorelei. I leave this attempt in just to show that Krabby didn't necessarily have any problems, but there are lots of Lorelei losses, and why is that? Well, the main reason is Growl. Dugong will never use Aurora Beam due to good AI and Krabby resisting it. 
Riss is very common. Sometimes you'll see a takedown, but when you see even a single growl, it makes the fight awful. Cloyster can be annoying, but he's doable even legitimately. The strategy I ended up doing for a while was using up all of my guillotine PP on one hitting it before going to Slowbro. And of course, it's possible that it'll confuse you and chip you down. It did happen a few times, but overall, it's pretty consistent to get it down with the guillotine, but that's not the final strategy I ended up doing. Slowbro turned out to be the most annoying Pokemon out of everything. It's always going to go for withdrawal or use amnesias, and if sometimes it'll go on a withdrawal spree, and that just means body slams will hardly put a dent in it and you're just forced to do crab hammer which isn't really a great solution and in the absolute worst case scenario and the reason that Lorelai beat me as many times as she did was that sometimes Slowbro will use three or more growls in a roll and that's pretty much a death sentence. Jinx really wasn't ever a problem. Uh, it'll double slap or use thrash but with high defenses it's not really an issue but Lapras is really tanky as it is but with multiple growls on you it's like watching paint dry, but instead of the paint drying at the end, you die. Overall, I ended up using rare candies to get to level 60 to make this fight more consistent, and it helped out a lot. The majority of my losses were from taking it on at level 56. So here's the final time I fought Lorelai, and a little insight to the strategy. Body Slam on Dugong generally triggers a rest, and since you have three turns before it can act again, three Body Slams will take it out. And in this case, I do get a crit on the second one, so it only takes two. You can see here that I got away from the guillotine strat on Cloyster. Uh, I end up saving it for later. Cloyster will chip you down and be annoying, but this is where you need to set up some hardens for badge boost. It's the best candidate for this since Slowbro is such an annoyance. Eventually you can take it down with just a couple of body slams which was initially surprising to me since Cloyster has the highest defense stat in the game but I guess Krabby has a nice attack stat. At this point I saved my 5 guillotine PP for Slowbro. In this instance it takes 4 times to get a successful one and it probably would have been just as efficient to just go straight for body slam but it is what it is. Unfortunately, it gets off one growl, which is awful, but eventually we get the one hit knockout and we move on to Jinx. To offset the growl slightly, I do use Harden on the Jinx to e try to even it out a little bit. The Body Slam is now a two hit knockout with growl, but it's still very easily manageable. Jinx never really gave me much of a problem this run. Now Lapras is really where you see the effects of a growl. Keep in mind that I only got hit with a single one and I have about four hardens on for badge boost. Counting in the retroactive super potions, it ends up taking seven body slams to knock out Lapras. Combine that with Confuse Ray, then you have what should be a two turn battle turning into a ten turn battle. Luckily, we do get past it and growl isn't a thing for the rest of the Elite Four. Next up is Bruno and guys, I have some awful news. Something that spiraled me into a deep depression. I actually lost to Bruno, not once, not even twice, but three times. That's right. Out of the 200 or so times we fought Bruno and all of these runs put together, he now has a 3 and 197 record against me and I couldn't be more sad about it. The first time I'm still seeing if I'll even need a strategy, I get critically hit with a jump kick by Hitmon Lee and taking down to 13 health. I still almost pull it off, but my first crab hammer against my champ gets the one out of five chance to not crit, and the second one just can't take it out, and submission finishes me off. The second time, a second body slam decides that it's not going to take out the Hitmonchan, and a thunder punch critically hits me down to a single point of HP, and not only that, it paralyzes me. And at that point, the Hitmon Lee can basically just breathe on me and knock me out. I'm already pissed off at this point in all of my attempts, but Bruno isn't done yet. Hitmonchan decides that it'll go for a not very effective Ice Punch for absolutely no reason at all. And you already know what's going to happen. I get frozen, and there's no coming back from being frozen in Generation 1. Eventually, after I start doing the attempts at level 60, it becomes trivial where Bruno belongs. I do level up after the Onyx, so the strategy for this one is simple. Crab Hammer crits on the Onyx, Hitmonchan, and Hitmonlee all take them down with a single hit. And at this point, I set up just a few Hardens on the Onyx just to make sure Machamp doesn't try anything fishy with Fissure, since it can affect you if you outspeed it. And then I take it out, and ultimately we knock out the Machamp in two hits. Let us never speak of these three losses again, and don't mention it in the comment section, I beg of you. Third up is Agatha. To put it simple as I can, this fight is hell. So many things can and usually did go wrong. I use rare candies to get up to the mid-60s, 
uh, and I replaced Guillotine with Blizzard at this point since Guillotine can affect most of her Pokemon. You can see in the first clip that Crab Hammer does alright damage, but unless Gengar uses Dream Eater for no reason or misses a Hypnosis, it generally turns out bad. I rarely got lucky, I get confused, I hurt myself, and I ultimately get taken out by a Nightshade. The second clip, I don't even get a chance to do anything. I get put to sleep and slammed with two Dream Eaters and that's that. The next attempt, you can see some genuine progress. I get an immediate swap to go back, and it does its best to be annoying by spamming Haze, but after a couple of Hardens to kind of offset that, I get to outspeed the Gengar when it returns back in, it misses a Hypnosis, two crits from Crab Hammer takes it out, then Golbat comes back in, it gets taken out, Honor takes two Crab Hammers and goes for a Dream Eater between those, but unfortunately when the Arbok comes in, it uses Glare, and the level 60 Gengar gets to get off a Nightshade, and 60 damage is a ton of damage for Krabby. And this goes on for quite a while. This is where the bulk of my resets back to Lorelei happened. Looking back, Mimic for Hypnosis may have been the play, but I didn't go that route. I made it past Agatha several times, but let's take a look at the final time I made it past her, and it involves her not getting lucky rather than me getting lucky, if you want to look at it like that. First off, Gengar misses Hypnosis. I follow up with a single Harden. One lets me outspeed Gengar, which is huge. I get my first Crab Hammer off, and it looks like another three hit. It goes for Nightshade, it does heavy damage, but it's better than anything else. My second Crab Hammer sends it to the Red Health, and I don't get a retroactive Super Potion, I get hit with Confuse Ray. The third Crab Hammer knocks it out, and we are on to the goal bat. I don't attempt to set up uh, any more Hardens, it's too dangerous. A Body Slam takes it to the Yellow Health, and it goes for a Wing Attack, which is perfect. A second Body Slam knocks it out, and notice both times that I win the Hit Myself Coin Flip. Now it's time for Haunter. I avoid hitting myself once again, and Crab Hammer unfortunately misses. I get hit with a Nightshade, I go down to 29 HP in the Red Health, I'm at dangerous levels here. My next Crab Hammer connects, taking it to less than half health. Hunter goes for a Dream Eater, which fails, and my second Crab Hammer gets us on to the next Pokemon. Arbok comes in, and I have a decision to make. I can't outspeed the last Gengar in my current state. I have to go for Hardens, despite being very low. I do one Harden, I get hit with an Acid. I do another Harden, I get hit with another Acid. And at this point, I'm so low, I have to go for the damage, even though at this point, I think that I need another heart. I go for a body slam, but it's not enough to one hit the Arbok. It goes for a bite, but it only does 8 out of the 9 remaining HP, takes me down to 1 health. I get off one more body slam to finish it off, and I'm left with just 1 HP and my hopes and dreams. The final Gengar comes in, and it turns out that two Hardens on the Arbok was enough to outspeed it. I go for a Hail Mary Blizzard so that maybe it freezes, it doesn't, and I get hit with a Confuse Ray. We still have a chance. I switch to Crab Hammer, I avoid hitting myself in Confusion, but the damage isn't quite enough to knock it out. Gengar's turn. It goes for another Confuse Ray that fails. Can I avoid hitting myself again? Krabby, right on cue, snaps out of it, hits the Crab Hammer, and we squeak out the victory. What a battle, folks. And we've seen how much of a nightmare Agatha was. What will happen when we make it to Lance? Well, a critical hit. Hyper Beam. Like salt in the wound. It doesn't even outright kill me. But I don't think that this one will be another miracle win. So I get hit with another Hyper Beam to the face. And we have to go all the way back through the Elite Four once again. On the second attempt, I still get chipped down by Gyarados. I miss one Blizzard on the first Dragonair. I don't miss on the second Dragonair. But when I make it to Aerodactyl, I miss a Crab Hammer, it takes a bite out of me, and we're forced to go all the way back to the start once again. The next attempt is exactly the same. I get chipped down when I make it to Aerodactyl, I miss Crab Hammer, get confused, and I go on to either miss or hit myself until it goes for a Hyper Beam and ends my life. 85% accuracy on Crab Hammer is a lie. The 4th try is everyone's favorite Lance play. Another critical hit Hyper Beam to put me in a rage induced coma. The fifth attempt's a little bit different. I get critically hit back to back by slams from Dragonair, and this fight shouldn't be this difficult. Finally, I get to the fight, and it goes decent. Turn one, Harden. Gyarados goes for Hyper Beam. It doesn't crit, so it's not too bad. It has to recharge. I go for a second Harden. Then I go for Body Slam. It gets full paralyzed, and a second Body Slam takes it out. Dragonair one comes in, and since I don't know how the fight goes, I don't know the stats, I do go for another Harden just to ensure that I outspeed everything. I take a critical hit slam for that and I go down to below half health. 
At this point, I'm able to hit a blizzard and knock it out. The next Dragonair comes in, it meets the same fate, one blizzard knocks it down. Aerodactyl comes in, and I'm finally able to hit a crab hammer against it for the first time out of all my lance attempts. And last up, we got Dragonite. I miss the initial blizzard and my jaw drops as I see it go for hyper beam. Luckily it didn't crit and I'm able to survive in the red hell. I go for a second blizzard and this one doesn't miss. Dragonite's flying, dragon topping gets melted by a blizzard and I'm able to go towards the champion. And my first attempt fails and that's for a simple reason. I usually save rare candies for the last three fights so that I can reset my experience and I won't level up so I can control the badge boost because we all know that leveling up gets rid of your badge boost. I say that just to say that I forgot to use my rare candy. This was the first time making it this far and I had some mental fatigue I guess. Pidgeot is a physical attacker so I go ahead and set up all six hardens but of course since I forgot the rare candy I level up immediately after Pidgeot and this means that I will not outspeed any of the relevant Pokemon that I need to. Segway into Alakazam. It outspeeds me. I get hit with Psychic for heavy damage, but I do take it out. I get the Paralyzed Chance on the first Body Slam, and I make it through, but at this point it's too little too late. Although I'm able to get past Rhydon, Gyarados, and Arcanine, the Blizzard isn't enough to one-hit the Venusaur, and pretty much any damaging move can kill me. It does a Mega Drain, and we're forced to restart. So finally, after all the tries, getting past the other Elite Four members 50 times, who knows how many times, I make it back, I don't forget my rare candy. I only use 4 Hardens against the Pidgeot, just in case I level up at some point during the fight. 4 should be enough to outspeed Alakazam, and Blizzard just misses knocking out the Pidgeot in one hit. A full restore takes it back to full health, so I go for 2 body slams to get the job done to reserve some Blizzard PP just in case. And since I didn't level up this time, I both outspeed and do more damage to the Alakazam, meaning that I can one hit it and I don't have to worry about Psychic. Rhydon is, isn't an issue, Rhydon's never an issue, it goes down with a single shot. Gyarados does scare me for a second, one body slam does not take it out, it goes for a hyper beam, but it doesn't crit, so I survive roughly about half health. I go for a second body slam, I get a generation 1 miss, somehow, but it has to recharge and the ensuing body slam takes it out. Next up is Arcanine, and Crab Hammer was internally designed for this moment. I connect, and the crit easily takes it out, but that's not the tough part of the battle. It's Venusaur. Big Boy comes out, I hit it with heavy blizzard damage, but now we're at the mercy to see if it wants to use Razor Leaf and in the run or not. It charges up a solar beam, and we don't miss the second blizzard, and that's it. Run over. Krabby has achieved victory. So how did it do? What are my thoughts? Well, well, Krabby had an amazing time, and we'll pull up the tier list later, but it finished with an astonishing 4 hours and 46 minutes of in-game time. It was just 4 minutes shy of Bellsprout's top time, but remember that Bellsprout wasted a lot of time doing struggle strategies against Dragonite because I messed up. Overall, I thought Krabby was pretty unique. It's a Pokemon that has good special moves, but stats that can't take advantage of it. And on the inverse of that, it has an amazing attack stat, but only Body Slam to use it with. There are some moves like Sword Stance and Mimic that might have made a difference, uh, but considering how little you actually use the attack stat, I stuck with Harden since you can use it six times as opposed to Swords Dance 3. I really wish that we could have seen what Crab Hammer would have done if it used the attack stat. It's an amazing move and I'm glad we get to use it. I'm pretty sure Krabby's the only, well Krabby and Kingler are the only people that get it. My overall thoughts on the run was that Krabby performed way better than I thought. The special stat was a huge red flag, but smart routing through the game can avoid those huge hurdles early and once you get past the early part of the game, you hit level 20, it really started picking up a lot of speed. I think that if it learned Dig in this generation, it could have been, who knows, it could have been a top tier Pokemon. But if we look at the updated tier chart, you can see that I decided to put Krabby in B tier. You could say it's probably a B plus in my book. And you might say, Matt, well what does A tier even mean if a time like this, roughly only 10 minutes off of J Rose 11's ghastly time, isn't even in the A tier? And to that I would say to me, A tier includes Pokemon that can do minimum battles. There's several factors to include and think about, but the fact that Krabby needed extra grinding and it took him about 50 tries to get through the Elite Four 
means that it's not in the upper echelon of those three, four, five Pokemon that are going to be up in S and A tier, despite its great time. Its coverage was also pretty poor, and that led to a lot of brute forcing my way through some of the battles throughout the game rather than having strategical options. And that's really all I gotta say. Krabby was pretty great. But as usual, if you've made it this far, I appreciate you. Comment Crab Hammer time down below and not something about Bruno so I know that you made it this far. And I guess I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye.